Um, yeah, how many days out are we from the, the game? Four? Is it four? Game's on Thursday. Is it Monday? It's Monday. Yeah. Is it Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, four days. Correct. Four days away. Yeah. So, it's, uh, it's almost here. How does that make you feel? I was just saying it, it still doesn't feel real. It's not really sunk in, but I think it won't until we're literally match day minus one going to see the stadium or the day of the game. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's nice. It's nice to be like this. I feel it's quite relaxed. So. Have you been to Sydney before? I've not. First time in Australia, actually. So you're getting, going to get to see any of the sites? See new sites. I think Brisbane's such a nice place. It's such a cool city. I like waking up in the morning, hit the wee button, the curtains open and the view is beautiful. So it's a, it's a nice spot. Australia seems like a cool place to be. This is what you get when you get to a World Cup final, as you see. Was the effort all worth it then? Right now, yes, but we'll see, we'll see um, in a couple of games' time. Yeah, it would be even sweeter if we could um, play well and upset, cause a few upsets, but we'll see how it goes. Have you watched the, uh, the France game that Australia played? They were very good. I've not watched the full game back, but that's today's homework. And obviously we've got analysis and stuff, so we'll sort of kick on. We had a day off yesterday, so we sort of switched off, um, just got away from camp and done our own thing, so we're back to business today. But you know those Australian players really well, and you know how much of a challenge it's going to be. Look, they've got a team filled with very good players. Um, we know how good they're going to be. And obviously they've got the extra advantage of being at, being at their home, home soil, fans, atmosphere. They've got all that in their favour. But we wanted to play a World Cup, and this is the way it is. So we need to deal with it. It looks like Vera has picked her team. I mean, it looks like you're in it. I don't know yet. We'll see um, come, come match day when she announces the squad. But um, I think one thing we know about this team is we've got players that are ready to come in and make a difference. We've got a good team, we've got a great squad. So whoever's picked will hopefully do the business. I know you had a lot of injuries and that, but you weren't necessarily first choice recently enough. So what did you do or how did you persuade her to make you one of the first 11? Um, I think if you, if you look at it, um, again, there's been more injuries. So sometimes that's football and Sometimes you're out and then sometimes a, a door opens and you need to try and take it. So it's just that. But look, we've got three games and anything can happen in these three games. There's going to be more injuries and everyone's going to need to be ready. So, What's your role specifically in that midfield? Probably work hard like we always do. Keep it compact. Um, be hard to break down. Work for each other and hopefully get our key players on the ball and hopefully get them attacking the opposition. If there's a chance that Denise doesn't make it, how big a blow would that be? Um, we'll all be wearing black armbands, probably. <laughs> but no, Dee's these, these made the hard stuff and um, fingers crossed she'll be fine. What was the tackle like? Um, look, it was a, a bit of a feisty game, it was heated, but um, it's done. It's done now and we're ready to move forward and all our focus is on this Australia game now. But were you ever in a game like that that had to be abandoned because it was overly physical? Believe it or not, Tony, I've been involved in a few games that have been a bit heated in my time. So, but um, never been in one that's been abandoned. But look, it was um, it was an unofficial match, so it was probably best that that's what happened. And both sets of players can go away now, heading into the World Cup, um, and just focus on what the task in hand now. In qualifying, what would be your standout moment? Your, what was the best result or the best performance, or just even a little moment that you, you remember? I'm going to go to the Sweden game for me, the Sweden away game, just because there was a bit, it's a bit, um, that game, was, there was a lot of disappointment at the end of the game because uh, we conceded so close to the, what was it, like 80 odd minutes we conceded. So that was a bit of a blow, but you go back to before the game, would you taken a draw before the game, we'd have bit your hand off. So I think going back to that showed that we can, if we do things right and we stay compact and we're hard to break down and we take our moments when we get them going forward, on our day, it can work out. So uh, yeah, go back to that game and that's something to take into this campaign now. And what about your particular perspective of Glasgow? Oh, that was uh, not fun. Didn't enjoy it at all. Um, I don't think I've ever been as emotional watching a game of football. You're in the stands, so you're, you're pretty much a fan, but then you've obviously got that connection with the team, the players, and 
you want to be there but you can't do anything but support them. I had to leave my family and just go and stand myself and uh, take it in when Amber scored. I think I cried and uh, I think at the full time I saw I cried. Uh, but it was amazing just to know that that would actually go over the line. Obviously the build up to all that, it was like, with games, then with another game. You had to have another game and another game before you knew you were going. So it's like you had to play off, but you had X amount of games after it. I was like, why are we celebrating a playoff then? So yeah, when you actually played Scotland and we got over the line, it was, it was sweet. So. And that amber goal, that moment, it has gone down in, in Irish sporting history. I mean, it's massive. Iconic. It's amazing. Um, we were, we were at um, an event and we'd watched it back and when you just watch it and you take it all in, you're like, that was amazing. Even from like Neve Fahey's header down to Denise, you know what Denise is like, she's going to just slice the ball right through for Amber, but Amber's touch and composure and I don't think Amber gets enough credit for how explosive she is, she's so fast um, and then a nice composed finish, so beautiful goal, beautiful goal. And she's got to be knocking on the door as well because of her performance against Zambia, for example. She, can, she knows where the goal is. Exactly, but look, that's, that's what we say. We are a squad. It's not just a team. We're not just a team of 11 players. We're a squad. And everyone can come in and do a job or else they wouldn't be here. Um, whoever starts the game will start the game, but we know there's going to be changes. Not everyone's going to play the full 90 minutes and the players that come on are going to come on and make a difference. So. Talk to me about Sinead Farrelly. I mean, I've seen her in the game in, in America and obviously uh, in Tala, but she's clearly a player of very high technical ability. Well, can she last 90 minutes? I wanted to see. I don't even know if I can last 90 minutes, Tony, so we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> but look, yeah, you've seen with Sinead, um, she's very comfortable on the ball. She's a technical player. and. Um, that's why Vera's probably got her in there to get the ball into her feet and hopefully can make combination passes linking up with Denise, Katie, myself, whoever's round about them. Um, we know in this competition we're going to need to get up the pitch and hopefully make the ball stick up the pitch. So that's what we're trying. But yeah, she needs to come in. She's done well. Um, technical player and hopefully she can last eight minutes. But if she can't, it doesn't matter. You get If you get 60 minutes out of her, you get 60 minutes out of her. It's the same for everyone. We're all in the same boat. Like I said, we've got people biting at the bit to get on the pitch, so they'll be ready to come on and make a difference. And do you think you've developed a bit of cohesion with her in the training sessions and how you've gone on? Yeah, of course, like we all have. Um, we're all, we've been in camp now for, I think we're on week six. We're on week six, so we're all starting to understand what each other wants. Um, even away from the training pitch, we've been meeting up and speaking and just talking about games, talking about training, how we can help each other out. Um, but does it feel like week six in the Big Brother house? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does, like that day off was needed yesterday. Um, obviously, it's, it's intense. It's, we're not used to being away for this length of time because it's our first major tournament. We're normally in camp for maybe two weeks max. Um, so it's, it's been long, but at the same time, it's been good. And it's like when you have to go and stay with relatives, you're not always going to get on every minute, but you need to take yourself away and calm down and do what, what, what works best for you. And it's the same as being here. But at the end of the day, we've got a group of great girl, girls and with some amount of laughs and giggles, so that helps. That strikes me as a really honest response. It's kind of like what Katie said at the press conference about Vera. You know, you don't always have to get on, mm. you know, swimmingly every time, but you're all in it for the sake of the, of the country. Well, that's it. Like, it's like anything in life. But I think people, when everyone says everything's rosy and hunky-dory and sweet all the time, it's, it's, it's not, and it's okay if it's not. At the end of the day, we are all colleagues, and um, we're working towards the same goal. But there's never any drama. We might have a wee, I think, um, I'll just be really honest, me and, um, at training the other day, me and Fahi had a running, and we were going at each other, and then after it, I had to say, Fahi, I'm sorry, I lost my head, I lost my cool. And she said, Rush, it's done was on the pitch, that's it, and then we're laughing about it two minutes later. So that's football, that's elite sport. Um, you're going to have disagreements and then at the same time it's done and you work again towards your goal. Simple. You're going to have to play on the edge though, aren't you, to get a result against these three teams, Australia, Canada, Nigeria, are all top teams. I mean, but that's it, we're at a World Cup, we're never going to get an easy group. So. At the same time, how exciting is it that we get to open up the tournament against Australia? Did you ever think that was going to be the case? 
and we're in this position. So um, at the end of the day, there's no, I don't think anyone really expects anything from us. Um, I think people think we're here to make up the numbers. It is our first tournament, so it's going to be a huge learning curve for us. It's going to be a lot of tough moments. We're going to need to stick together and rally around each other, but we've shown we can do that. And yeah, in Canada, again, Olympic champions. We played them um, years ago at Cyprus Cup, and obviously they've developed a lot since then, but I'd like to think so have we. Um, and then Nigeria, obviously we played Zambia to try and get a, a bit of a taste of what that kind of style would be like. And Zambia were very tough. We struggled at times, um, but it was great to play them. So then, how good Niger was Barbara Bender, by the way? Oh, and um, how do you say her other name? Kunyandanji. That yeah, she was. She turned me inside out a few times. I was like, right, you come back, please. Um, but yeah, like really good players, and uh, Nigeria will be the same. So it's going to be tough, but it's exciting. And what do you think the legacy will be? Because coming to this World Cup, you want to do as well as you can, of course. But now we need to start qualifying for tournaments. On a, on a regular basis? That's the thing and that's what we want to happen. We want this to become the norm. It needs to become the sort of thing going forward. Obviously it'll be the Euros next and it would be amazing if we could qualify for that but obviously heads are here right now and then it'll be a quick turnaround. So it'll be the Nations League before we know it and that's obviously new. That's a different format. I've not looked too much into it so I don't actually have a clue what's going on but uh, I'll deal with that after the World Cup. Um, but look, we've got, it's exciting right now, we can see um, even in the team right now, there's young players coming through um, and at the same time we've got a lot of people my age, old heads, um, but it's nice to know that there is quality coming through and hopefully Irish football is on the up. And did you get over the last six weeks the sense though of what it has meant to the country? Obviously you went to see the president, you got, went to see the government. Uh, but the fans on the street, the people that you saw in UCD, you got that sense of what this group of girls means to Ireland now? Yeah, definitely. Um, in a weird way, it's kind of, it's, it's like sad that you can't see it right now. Like, tournament's about to kick off and we're so far away from it. Like, we're in our own wee bubble, so you're not really seeing it all, but we've spoken to a few of the girls and stuff and obviously everyone's saying, like, people's streets and that are decorated, tricolours and stuff everywhere and it's real football World Cup fever. Um, but it's like it's sad that you can't actually see it in a way. But at the same time, it's probably good that we're just focused. We're here. There's, we're going about our business and we're not getting too hyped up. It's probably a good thing that we're quite calm and chilled. But delighted that that's the way it is going back home. And um, it's nice to know that there's so many young girls and boys and parents, people, everyone that is just there supporting us and happy. So it's nice. It's nice that people will be watching us.